Hello class, this is the first tutorial for a text mining class and um, in this tutorial we will introduce how to use R to do the sentiment analysis. Basically we want to uh, classify the sentiment for a movie review, for a certain movie review. So let's first look at our data. Well, we're going to use this movie one data set. So basically, it has two variables, two features. This label column represents the sentiment label. So it can be this movie review can be negative or positive. And the other feature is the review, which each review is a chunk of taxes. So it is totally different from we what we used to do what we used to use like those different features with either like um, like numeric features or categorical features this time we we gonna like analyze those text this chunk of text so let's get started so these are a few packages uh, gonna use in this tutorial. The first one is TM. TM is stand for the stands for the text mining. So TM package is used for text mining in R and word cloud is to generate those pre very pretty word cloud. And RYCAP, now uh, you should be familiar with RYCAP package. It was it it was used for so many different uh, classification algorithms and also the evaluation methods. And the next one is Snowball C. Snowball C package is used for the word stemming. And carrot, carrot is used for partitioning the data set. And R minor, well, we will use one evaluation uh, matrix from R minor package. And CurlLab is used for building the support vector machine classifier. And R part is used for the uh, classification and regression trees. Well, if you haven't installed this, this uh, packages, please do. And I already installed them, so I just load them. So next, we're going to import our movie data set, movie review data set. Um, well, you can use the file choose like we used to use before, or I can set uh, my my uh, directory and directly import this movie data set. And this header equals to true, so we have those header label and review header available, and strings add factors equals to false, which means um, well, those will be imported as characters instead of factors. Let's check the structure of our movie review data set. So basically, we have two variables. The first one is the review contents we, we, uh, I just showed you before. The second one is label. Both of them are now character type. And but we want the label to be factored with two levels, positive or negative. And let's summarize these two variables. So the label, so basically we have 2,000 reviews. And among these 2,000, we have 1,000 active and 1,000 positive, which means we have a very balanced data set. And if we see the proportion of our label variable, we can see like each of them take up to 50% of the reviews. Well, next we want to partition our data set into training and testing data set. We will not do the tenfold or nfold cross validation yet. We will not only like randomly partition our data set into training test one and test two well like we used to do it before um, test uh, training a, a training data set is 50 percent of our total data set and testing one testing two are like 25 it 25 percent each 
so remember to set seed. So we will have this uh, random result each time we run this code. And we will use this create data partition function, uh, which is from the library carrot. So let's run this one. And this create data partition function, if you still remember, will generate a random set of index, row index, and those row index will compose our training data set. And the and the rest uh, row index that are not selected by this function will will we'll construct our testing data set. And we further partition our testing data set to 25% and 25%. So test, test 1 and test 2 both um, both has like 25% of our data set. So after you partition your training and testing data set, you can check the results. So we will use this n row summary and prop table functions to see the distributions and also the number of rows in both um, training and testing data set. So for training, we have 1,000 reviews. And for testing, each testing um, consists consists of 500 reviews, and because we randomly partition them, um, the distribution probability for an active and positive class are 50 percent. Well, next we'll start to analyze the text using TM library. Well. The, the mean function we're going to use is tm um, underscore map. But before we use that function, we need to first transform our review content into a corpus. Well, there are two approaches we're going to introduce here to, try, uh, to do this step. The first one is use the vector source first. Well, the vector source will turn your reviews into a vector of text. And then you put a corpus function outside this vector source function. It will turn this vector to a corpus. So we only first turn all our uh, review from training dataset to a corpus named train corpus n. And it should still has uh, contents 1,000 reviews. Well, if you have any questions about the functions, you can always use this question mark and the function name to uh, see their detailed explana explanations. The second approach to, to transform the review to a corpus is using this data frame source. But before using data frame source, you need to first turn this review into a matrix and then I uh, turn it into a data frame and then turn it into a, a corpus. So these two approaches serve the same purpose. Well, well the next step is start to use this tm underscore map function. Um, it is from the library tm. It is text mining library used in R. And let's first check our first review. Well, you can see, um, well, the first step we're going to do is to change all the letters into lowercase, lowercase letters. But you can see we already have all lowercase text content which means this two lower function here doesn't make, uh, doesn't make any difference. But we're still going to introduce it here. Um, so you can use them later. So here you can see you have a backslash n. Uh, this is the sample for line change. So it means, well, you start a new line here. 
So uh, we will use this T um, underscore map. The first parameter is the training corpus you just created. And if you want to perform the uh, lower cases function, you use to lower it here in the second parameter. And well, step one here is another like newly created corpus that um, contains all lowercase characters, letters. Well, if you want to see the first review in this corpus, well, if you only use this single um, single square bracket, let's check. Sorry, let's check this one. Well, you did not see the content of the review. It just gives you, OK, this is the corpus. And you have one document. If you want to look into the review content, you need to put double uh, square brackets. So this is the review content. Similarly, if you only use one uh, square bracket and put a range from review 2 to 3, it doesn't show you either. But if you use the inspect function, and inside this inspect function, you put in the range of reviews, it will present you with both of the review contents. Well, lastly, if I embed a have function inside of the inspect function, well, I can see here, I set this parameter equals to 3. I can see the top three reviews, sorry, top three reviews from this corpus step one. So basically, basically this two lower function change every character, every letters every letter to lowercase. Well, the next step is remove the numerical values from the corpus. Well, we only want the uh, important words as our features to do the sentiment prediction, sentiment classification. So we want to eliminate all the numbers. So here we will use this remove numbers function from tm map function. So this one is used as our second parameters. Um, the first parameters is a corpus from the first step. So it is step one. So now we will create a new corpus step two. Step two eliminating eliminated all the numbers. So let's see the first review. So basically it removes all the numbers. Well, the third uh, third step is remove stop words or some certain personalized words you created. So what are stop words? Stop words are some words are some words that doesn't make any doesn't have a lot of meanings. For example, the propositions or the articles and so on and so forth. So we want to first eliminate those words which doesn't contribute much to the sentiment analysis. So we will now change the, um, the parameter to remove words. And what words do we want to remove? We include another parameter in this third place, stop words. Well, we we want to like eliminate those stop words from English. Well, the default value for this stop words is English. So if you put nothing inside this parentheses, it basically also remove uh, English re, uh, stop words. So let's run this removing stop words, and then we check the first review again. So you can see like the first sentence now 
transformed to two teen couples go church party. So they eliminate the word to this proposition. And well, you can also like specify your specific word you want to remove. For example, here, um, I want to remove this word too. So a just instead of stop words, the third parameter um, is the word too. And let's see. Now the first sentence came to uh, become teen couples go church party. Well, you can have a set, like a combination of words you want to remove from your corpus. So in the third parameter, I use the combine function and include four different words. So I want to remove these four, uh, four <clears throat> words because this is movie. These are movie reviews. So movie film films appears in every basically every um, every reviews every review frequently. So uh, I want to remove those uh, unnecessary words. Also, you can compose a parameter include not only the stop word, but also the specific words you want to remove together into a my stop words. So this my stop words is uh, your personalized stop words list. And then you put it in the set third parameter. It will it will remove all the words from this list. So now we do not have any words from this list. Well, the fourth step is to remove those pun punctuations. Well, I will change the second parameter to remove punctuation. Use the step 3C here. And let's check. Let's see the first review. So now all the punctuation, such as a question mark, the period, and this comma are all removed. And the fifth step is to remove all the white spaces. So those uh, backslash n we discussed uh, before, they're still here. They're still here, but we want to remove all these. So we, we will use this, this stripe white space function inside this tm map function. So let's run this. So you can see now, uh, instead of sentences in the first review, now the first review become uh, a list of words. Well, the above five steps, such as um, remo removing stop words, re removing white spaces, removing like numbers, and change them all to lower cases, are we called the uh, pre-processing in text mining. So why do we want to do this pre-processing? Because in this review uh, sentiment analysis, we want to like predict the sentiment, positive or negative, for each review in our testing data set. And the uh, target variable is the label. Well, the predictors, the features we want to use are back out words, which are the each uh, the word frequency contained in each review. So that's why we want to transform those word, uh, those reviews into like a list of words. Well, the next step is called stem. So what is stem? Uh, in linguistic, stem is um, a part of word. So, so here is a stem example. Um, now we have three words, beauty, beautifully, and beautiful. 
and the stem version, the stem for these three words is beauty. So why do we want like the words to convert it to their stem in our training data set? Because if, for example, we do not convert them to their stem, so beauty, beautiful, and beautifully stand for um, three words. Well, I know, like, we know that they're describing something positive. So in the training that I said, we, maybe one review has beauty, another review has beautiful. But if we have the third word, beautifully, in a testing data set, based on this two word from training, we could not know that this beautifully is also positive. But if we all use this beauty, which is their stem, so basically this beauty appears three times, twice in the training and once in the testing. So in the testing, we can like imply this beauty is also positive. So that's why we use their stems instead of their original word, words. So here is another example of stems. Um, there are four sentences and we compose a corpus based on these four sentences. Then I use this stem document uh, function to convert every word in this corpus to their stem, uh, to its stem. So let's check the second sentence. The original lines apply for our open associate position. Now it it, it was converted to apply for our open associate position. Well, so we want we want this stem document to work on the words from our review in the corpus. Well, this line of code is supposed to um, transform all the words to their stems. Unfortunately, if you're using a Mac Pro or Mic Air like I like I do. This line of R code doesn't make any changes to the words. But if you're using a Windows machine, well it will probably work like I did. I tried it on my desktop and it successfully gave me the stamp for stamps for all the for all the word in our reviews. For example, here, continue, it converts to this, and things, and audience, and really, and so on and so forth. Well, we will talk about the solution for this problem later. Well, next, uh, oh, this is the end of the pre-processing. We basically use this tm underscore map function from tm library and change the second parameter to to lower remove number n remove numeric numbers remove stop words remove uh, a lot of things. So now for each review we have like a list of standardized words. Well, we want to calculate the word word uh, word frequency for each review. So we want to transform the corpus to a document term matrix. So what is this document term matrix? Well, imagine now, okay, we have like in our training data set, we have 1,000 reviews, right? So this matrix will contain 1,000 rows. So each row stands for one review. Well, then this function will combine all the distinct words together. So for example, uh, you re review one has like 10 words, Review 2 has uh, another 10 words, but they have 5 duplicates. So in total, they have 15 words. So if we build this matrix based on these two reviews, 
will have 15 distinct words. And this 15 distinct words will be 15 columns. Therefore, if we have, for example, 1,000 rows here, and in total we have distinct words, how many? Let me, for example, 30,000. 30, well, then we will have we will have a really huge matrix with one thousand rows and thirty thousand, um, thirty thousand, uh, sorry, thirty thousand columns. And I drew a table as an example. So, for example, we have seven reviews, and this seven review contains seven distinct words. So if word one appears twice in review one, the cell here equals to two. Well, if word three doesn't appear in the review one, the frequency is zero. So basically, the values inside this document matrix, document term matrix, are the frequencies for each word in the review. So hope I explain it clear, clearly here. Well, there's another unfortunate. If I you if you use uh, Mac Pro or Mac Mac Air, well, we haven't figured out why yet. Probably is the version of R or R Studio or Java, but it did work in a uh, on a Windows machine but it will throw out these arrows here. So we could not transform this corpus into this matrix. Well, if you are using a Windows machine, or like um, you can probably try this line of R code, but the, if this, R, R, uh, this line of R code throw you in this arrow, well, we figure out we can directly use this document term matrix function. So this string corpus M is original corpus without any pre-processing. And we can add more parameters inside this document term matrix function to do the pre-processing. For example, here, if we set this remove numbers equals to true, remove punctuation equals true, so on and so forth, it basically serves the same purpose as the function tm underscore map. Uh, so we, if you use this line of R code, you, you do not need to do the the pre-process three pre-processing six steps I said before you can do it here in one line of R code, and this one doesn't throw us with any errors. That's really lucky. Oh, it may take a few seconds. Okay, so let's see the dimension. So basically, it is um. So here, like one thousand rows. 22, more than 22,000 columns. So basically, 1,000 uh, reviews contains over 22,000 distinct words. Well, some words are randomly like rare appear. For example, in 1,000 review, it only appear once or twice. So we will remove those sparse terms only uh, remain those frequent terms and you can go check the remove sparse term here so this is a sh the second parameter is a threshold to eliminate those sparse terms let's check our dimension again after eliminate those sparse term so now we remain 20 words, frequent words here. So next, we will we want to display the most frequent 20 words from this 200 frequent words. So we know that each column stand, stands for um, a distinct word. 
So we use this column means function to calculate the average frequency for each word. And then we sort them in descending order. And then we only select the top 20 to display. So you can see here like few movie, one lack or some words um, have, the high, have the highest frequency. Well, if I then use a mean function, we can calculate the average frequency for all these top 20 words. So basically, it is calculate the average, the mean, for these 20 numbers. So it is more than 1.7. So each word appears averagely at least twice. Almost twice, sorry. And next, we will show the frequency for this 20, 20 words in a bar plot. So you can see, well, film and movie are, are two words that are, that has the highest frequency. Sorry, here. Well, next, if we only want to, like, compare the average frequency, and if the zeros are not counted in averaging. So for example here, before we have, we calculate, for example, for word one, we like um, some 2073205 and divided by the number of reviews, which is seven. Well, now we want to eliminate those zeros, so we only want to add up those non-zero values and divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is how we want in this function. Well, firstly, we first transform them into a matrix, and then we convert zeros to NA, which are missing values. And then we can directly use this col column means function again, but remove those NAs, remove those missing value, and then sort them in descending order. And display only the 20 top, the top frequency words. You can see that if we exclude all the zeros, we can have like a higher frequency calculation. And the average frequency of these 20 words are more than almost 2.5. And then you can we can also plot bar plot those 20 frequent words. Well, well, like we did before, but uh, using the tm underscore math function, we construct our own stop word list, including some specific words such as movie, film, review, uh, one, two, so on and so forth. So here we like do this step again without the tm map. So we include the one, two, three, make, get, movie, movie, film, and films. Those words doesn't make any contributions to positive or negative sentiment analysis. So we compose this my stop word list. Oh, here, sorry, we still use this tm map function to remove these words from our training corpus. So after removing those training corpus, we can do this again, the document term matrix, removing stop words uh, to lower stemming and so on and so forth.
So remember before we have about that matrix has about 22 more than 22,000 columns which means now we should have less. Well, it'll eliminate almost one, 100 words. And then you, we can also remove those sparse terms. So before we have 200, uh, frequent, uh, 200 frequent words, now we only have 195 with frequent words. So like five words such as this few movie are limited. So after we eliminate, after we remo removing our specified, our personalized stopping words, let's see um, the top 20 most frequent words again. Let's see, only the 20, so. Now we no longer have movie, film, so on and so forth. The most frequent word is lack. The second one is character. Character. And the average for more, most average frequency for these 20 words is 1.194. Well, you can also like plot it using this bar plot function. Next, we're going to use this word clock function to um, generate 30 words. Well, this word clock function is a function used to uh, virtualize it for virtualization. It can generate some really pretty word clock based on the frequency. Depending on frequency of the words, it will adjust the size of the word and the color of the words. So here, the first parameter is for it, it is the word itself. This one is a frequency, the size, the color. So here is the example of this word clock. It's really pretty. You could paste it in your paper or project. Now let's start to build sentiment classification models. Um, the first thing is to create uh, the training data frame for training the models. Um, well, this train removes for m is from the document term matrix with 200 frequent terms um, and, it, and their frequency in it. And we first con convert this document term matrix to a matrix using as metric and name it as train back word frequency matrix. Well the rows for uh the rows for the these metrics are are the reviews and also the columns are still the terms, the frequent terms. And then we use data frame function to combine the label. Remember we have the sentiment label for each review for training data set. So we combine this training, um, the review labels from training data set with our uh, back hour frequency matrix and create, create a data frame. This data frame is used to train our, all our models. And well, you can, this label, we'll add one more column. So basically, if we see the structure of this data training data frame, we can know that in total we have 201 variables. Well, the 1,000 observations stands for the 1,000 reviews. And the one variable is the factor variable, the, the sentiment, uh, positive or negative, as our predictor and the rest 200 variables are those frequent terms we generated before and the values for this uh, values for each predictor and are the frequencies and well we also save the backup words generated from the training data set 
for a later usage. Later usage, and the length of this backup word should be two hundred. I'm、uh, sorry, two. Yeah, two hundred. Well, next we want to create our testing data frame. We will start with testing data one. The first thing is to、um, transform the review content to a corpus, and we name it as testing one corpus M. Well, next with this corpus, you can do the pre-processing pre-processing steps best step by step, but we also can. Use this document term matrix and include all the pre-processing parameter here, like to lower, remove numbers, punctuation, stop words, white space, stemming. Well, you notice here we add an additional、um, a parameter called dictionary. Well, this string backup word M is the backup word we saved from our training dataset. So with this dictionary,、uh, this document term matrix only calculate the frequency of the words from this dictionary. So basically,、um, if there are any other words in this testing data one,、uh, this 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 function will ignore them. They only calculate the compute the frequencies from these two hundred frequent terms from training one. Even though those two hundred、uh, terms are not may not be frequent in testing one, they still only calculate those two hundred words to be consistent with training dataset. So let's run this one, and well, you can know the dimension. Well, in testing data one, we have. Five hundred reviews. So now we add two hundred frequent words. So this matrix should have should have five hundred rows and two hundred columns. Like these two hundred columns are same. The words are the same as the training dataset, training data frame. Well, the next.、Um, similarly, we will. Uh, transform the format from document term matrix to matrix. Then combine the testing re testing dataset, the reviews from testing dataset, and combine the label with the two hundred words frequency matrix and compose them as a data frame. And this testing one data M is the Testing data frame we're gonna use for evaluate the models. Well, as you can see, similarly we still got five uh zero uh sorry, two hundred and one variables. One is for the factor predictors. Factor predictor negative positive and the the rest two hundred. Uh, are the predictors the are the、uh, terms? Well, next we gonna、uh, here we listed、uh, all the classification models from our last class, our data mining class, the decision tree, neural network, Nye Bayesian support like machine, and the、uh, key nearest neighbor. Well, we will only demonstrate you the C tree, the new、um, support vector machine and I base models. Well, you can try the rest of them offline if you if you like. So we first will try the C tree classifier. The first thing is you need to load the package library called Party, and we use this C tree function to build a decision tree model.、Um, the data we're gonna use is the training data M. The data frame training data frame we just created, and the Y is the sentiment label positive or negative for the reviews from training data set, and dot represent the rest two hundred terms the frequent terms we 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 obtained from the training data set. So this model is called B O W C tree M, and 
Well, next we can plot this model. So let's zoom in. So let's first look at the leaf. Um, the leaf are blocks. Well, you can see uh, the black block. Uh, the black part of the block represent represents the past sentiment, and the uh, white block part represents the negative negative sentiment. So, for example, this one because the 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 black block is larger than the white block so for the reviews that fall into this leaf will be predicted as positive because the black block is larger so let's look at one path one simple path so for for this review if this review included the word bad more than once and the grid, if they also include the word grid more than three times, this this review will be positive, will be predicted as positive. Well, next we will use the testing data one, the data frame, to evaluate the prediction result. The first thing is to generate a prediction from for the testing data frame for the reviews from testing data frame. Um, so the first parameter, if you still um, recall, the first parameter is a model, and the second one is the testing data frame. Well, next we will evaluate the prediction results using confusion metrics and also M metric. Well, M metric is from R minor. So if you want to use M metric to combine like accuracy, recall, precision, F measure, those evaluation metrics together, um, you, you should first load this R minor library. And this is the label, the sentiment label for the actual sentiment label for each review. This is our prediction. So let's see the evaluation result. So you can see like the accuracy actually is not uh, it's not very bad. It's, 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 it's good. Um, it's over 63%. And well, next we will try the naive base model using E1071 library. Well, similarly, we, we first built a new model, uh, first built a new naive base model using this string data frame with label as predictor and the rest 200 terms as, um, sorry, it was label as target variable and the 200, rest 200 terms and predictors. And let's check the evaluation result. Well, naive base model performs better than the uh, C tree model. And the third one we're going to demonstrate is a kernel support vector machine classifier from Curl Lab. And similarly, we build a model and evaluate them using testing data one. Well, among these three models, uh, kernel support vector machine perf performs the best. The accuracy is over 75 percent and in terms of f measures both both of the the sentiment classes for both of the sentiment classes they're like above 70 percent as well um next we're gonna demonstrate you the performance on testing data frame two well similarly uh, we the first step is still like convert the review contents to the corpus and do the pre-processing the calculate the term frequency all together using document term matrix 
Well, you notice here we still use dictionary equals to back our word from the tree meat as that in order to keep the features, the variables, consistent. So the variables from both training and testing one, testing two are the same. Well, as we can imagine, the dimension for this uh, document term matrix for testing data two is 500 and 200. Well, next, we will convert the document term matrix to a metric and create a data frame by combining the uh, review labels from testing data two. Well, in the end, we will still demonstrate you with these, uh, those three classification models, and you can also try them later offline. Uh, the first one is still C tree model. And the nine base model. And Lastly, our support vector machine kernel model. Well, you can see like for testing data one, um, C tree performs, uh, nine basin performs better than C tree, but for testing data two, um, in terms of accuracy, oh, still like nine base model performs better than C tree model and the support vector machine outperform the other two. So the results are also consistent um, with our performance in testing data one. So this is what we cover for our sentiment analysis, sentiment prediction for a movie review uh, using only the backhaul words as predictors. So if you have any questions, please let us know in class. Thank you.